Hi guys, my name is Cameron. I am with the Infinite Real Estate Group and happy Martin Luther King Day. Um, for those who don't know, I make a video every Monday where we go over market statistics and I also get to teach you a little bit about real estate. So with that, today I'm going to be sharing something really fun with you guys. It's something known as the Burr Strategy. And it's that because it's an acronym of a strategy that investors typically do to pick up rentals or, you know, this is a great strategy, especially for owner occupied, you know, meaning you are moving into the house, you're looking to get started in real estate. This is the strategy that I would say is for you. Now, it's burr because you first buy an investment and it's important that you start off right. You want to buy an investment with an ARV of about 75%, meaning ARV stands for after repair value. That means if you buy a place and you fix it up, what is that value gonna be? So for example, if you buy a home all fixed up on the market, um, and it typically costs about $100,000, you wanna make sure that you're at least buying that at, uh, at about 75,000, just so that you have that spread. Um, so of course, once you buy it, you're gonna you know, move in or not move in, whichever you want. Uh, you're gonna rehab it, make sure that you're getting it rent ready. Uh, then you're actually gonna rent it out, lease it to someone. Uh, and then once you've done all those value adds and you've got a great property now, you are going to refinance and pull your money back out. That's why it's important that you first get it at that 75. Some banks will even do 80%. So, you know, talk with your money guy about that. Um, and then you repeat. That's the overall strategy. And that's what I wanted to jump into today and actually go through a real life scenario. Um, so especially here in Utah, inventory is super low. Maybe you can find a property on the MLS, maybe not. Um, for those who are getting frustrated with saying, you know, there's no properties on the MLS, there is another option. I mean, geez, if we would have looked a couple years ago, you could have said foreclosures. However, those aren't happening right now. The other option is wholesaling. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about what wholesaling is. Um, before I do that, this is a property that uh, is called a wholesale contract, I guess, where uh, you have these people called wholesalers. They go out and they get a property under contract. That's what they did with this one. And then they turn around to their, all their investment buddies and say, hey, it could be worth this much, but uh, the starting price is going to be down here. And they are selling their contract to purchase the property, if that makes sense. Long story short, I help, uh, I put out a list of all these properties every week. If you guys are interested in getting on that list, go to this link, bit.ly uh, slash Cameron's list. Just put your name and email and uh, you can start seeing these deals. Um, so this one specifically was in Salt Lake. It's a four bedroom, two bath. Um, the suggested price on this that the wholesaler was talking about was 355. Um, and they even were so nice to provide us with a rehab estimate on this, which was about 44.5. So if you do the math on that, um, and let, in this example, I, I lowered the rehab a little bit just because I feel like this wholesaler was overdoing it a little bit. Um, let's say it only costs you 30,000 to rehab it and you purchase it for 355, you're all in, at 385. So now you own it, it's all rehabs. Now it's time to refinance. And so the property is going to be worth about 479 or more, which comes out to be an 80% loan to value ratio. So in this case, you can refinance, pull your money out, get it into a 30 year mortgage, and your monthly payment is going to be about 1800. For four bedroom, two bath in this area, you could rent it out for 1950, which is cash flowing 150 a month. Now, what I didn't explain is when you buy a wholesale property, you have to pay cash up front. Typically won't do any conventional loans, generally speaking. Um, and so typically you would use hard money to get into this property and rehab it. And that's why it's important to refinance and get your hard money back out. You can pay off the hard money guy and uh, get it into a 30 year uh, low fixed rate mortgage. Um, so kind of cool, right? That's how you can uh, you know, get a bunch of rentals and just keep moving from one property to the next. Um, so now let's go ahead and get into this, uh, this month's uh, market update. Uh, so the average days on market right now is 26 and a half. 
average day is going down, meaning the market is speeding up. However, we did see a decrease in pricing these last, uh, this last week or so. Um, however, properties are still going for about $2,600 over asking price, which is good to know. We had about 16, 1,700 sales in the last 30 days and 30-year uh, interest rates did bump up. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, they're now at back up at 2.79, and this is from the Freddie Mac website. So I have it highlighted here, their explanation. While mortgage rates are expected to increase modestly in 2021, they will remain inarguably low, supporting home buyer demand and leading to continued refinance activity. So you can see right here, they did kind of shoot up, but we here were supposed to say inarguably low. So we'll see about that. Um, and then this is a new stat I wanted to show with you guys as well, inventory levels. So this basically means that if no new homes came on the market, the whole MLS would dry up and there would be no more homes to sell in two and a half months. So I'm gonna start reporting on this number as well, just so that we can have an idea. But that's it guys, that's the Monday market update. I hope you found some value out of this video. Um, if you are interested in wholesaling or buying a property, selling a property, let's talk, I'm here. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much guys, we will see you next week.